Hello everyone, let's discuss a lead code problem today. And today's problem is problem 323, three, number of connected components in an undirected graph. This is a lead code premium problem. And also this is one of the problems in the Brian 75 list. So if you don't have lead code premium account, just bear with me. We are going to discuss the problem, uh, this discuss the solution technique, and also we'll try to code it. So this, uh, let's go to the problem description. So we are given a graph, this is important, of n nodes, okay, n nodes. And we are given an integer n, an array, an array of named edges, where each of the members of the array is a pair. This indicates that there is an edge between AI and BI in the graph, okay? So suppose, and we have to return the number of connected components in the graph. So suppose in the second example, you see n equals to five. That means we have five edges, uh, zero, one, two, three, four. And then there are edges, there, sorry, there's five vertices. Uh, so there is edge between zero and one, one and two, two and three, three and four. So after using all the edges, you see all the nodes become connected. So the number of connected components become one. Okay, so how do we solve this problem? We know that uh, one of the most popular data structures um, for using this kind of connected, finding the connected components is uh, disjoint set data structure and union find algorithm. If you have watched my lecture on union find, uh, you'll get like more insight about this. If you haven't watched this, I suggest you watch this, or if you already know the algorithm, uh, you know that we can use this algorithm to try to solve this problem. Apart from that, since this is a graph problem, we can solve this using DFS and BFS. Uh, so the idea is if the graph is disjoint in that case, uh, BFS and DFS has to run like multiple times to reach all the nodes, right? So the number of components is going to be how many times we are running DFS and BFS, right? So if we're using DFS and BFS, uh, the number of components in the graph is equals to how many times we need to run DFS or BFS to reach all the nodes or to visit all the nodes, okay? Okay, so that is the thing. Uh, but we are, today we're going to solve it using union find. So let's discuss that way. If we have time later, I will come back again and solve this problem using DFS, BFS, but I would suggest you to I'll try to solve it using DFS, BFS yourself. Okay, so let's talk about the algorithm that we are going to use, union find. So initially, we are going to, in, in an union find, the idea is initially we will think that each of the nodes are like uh, separate. That means zero, one, two, three, four. Initially, we'll think that these are separate nodes, right? Okay, or let's draw it here. Zero, one, two, three, four. I am actually writing the notes in different directions just for the ease of drawing. Otherwise, once I put the edges, then it will be a little bit different, difficult. So the notes are, the set of notes are going to be this, zero, one, two, three, four, sorry. And the edges are going to be, you know, zero, one, one, two, two, three, and three, four. These are the edges. Okay, so initially there, we can think that there are, every node is disjoint. That means we have five disjoint nodes. And in a disjoint set, a data structure, every 
element or every node is a part of a component. And that component is uh, recognized or defined by its root node. So a component may look like this, right? A, B, C. Where uh, this component is known by its root node C. Okay, so we'll try to create this kind of components, but initially all of the components are separate. So zero, one, two, three, four, or are separate. And what is the root for each of the nodes? So we keep an array, we call it parent. Zero, one, two, three, four. Uh, at the beginning, we'll initialize each array with its own like value. That means zero is its own parent, one is its own parent, two, three, four. So here is a thing like we know that each component is known by its root value. So now the parent and the root is the same for now. So if we can just say if uh, parent value is equals to equals to node value, then it's a root. Right, okay. Now let's see how things keep on changing. So this is the first thing to remember. The second thing to remember is uh, after each union, each successful union, the number of components decrease by one. Yeah. That makes sense because a successful union means that two components uh, merge and become one component. So obviously the number of components decrease by one. That's the second thing to remember. Uh, okay, and the third thing is like, when two components are like, uh, we are doing an union, we'll try to do it union by size. That will actually make our algorithm efficient. We know about the union by size and, and, and the fourth thing is we'll try to do some path compression. So both of these things are for efficiency of the algorithm. Okay, so, we have to keep the size, right? If we want to do union by size, we have to keep track of the size of the each of the components. So initially, what is the number of components? Let's remove these insights. So we, we are trying to initialize. So number of components for this problem is five. Initially, is five. Uh, every node is assigned as its own parent at the beginning, and the size of each component is set to one, right? Because each component you see is separate now. Okay, so now let's go through the edges. Next step is going through the edges and try to do some union. So uh, first, we are going through this edge zero and one. Okay, so if I want to do the union, first I have to ask like, hey, zero, what's your root? Like which component you are in? So zero goes here in the parent array and checks its parent. This parent is itself. We know that if the parent is, if the node's value and the parent's value is the same, that means that's the root of that component. So it says, oh, my root is zero. We ask one, hey, what's your root? And it finds itself as its parent. Uh, so that's the root, right? So it says, okay, my root is one. Well, that means we have to union between, make a union between zero and one. Now, the thing is you see zero and one, these two roots are not the same. If they are not the same, that means they are disconnected. They are not in the same component, right? So if they were in the same component, the root would have been the same. Since uh, that is not the case, since the roots are different, that means we have to make an union. And can we say that the number of component decreased by one? So say number of component 
now becomes four, right? Okay, it becomes four. Okay, so now if I want to make an union, there I have to decide which one is going to be the new root. So that one I will decide based on the size. We know that the smaller tree joins the larger tree. So I ask, hey, zero, what's your size? What is the size of your component? It says, oh, my size is one. You, we ask one, uh, what's the size? It says one. That means both of them have the same size. So we have to break the tie arbitrarily. So we can say, okay, from the first node, we will connect to the second node. So this is the thing. Okay, so once I do this, now I have to make some changes to the size. Now, what is the size of this new component? The size is going to be two, right? So this is the size array. So the component that has a root one now has a size of two. Done? Okay. Next. So this is with zero, one. Next, we read this edge, one, two. We ask one, hey, uh, what's your root? Okay, so one says, uh, my root is one. Because my parent is one, and if the value of the parent is the same as the value of the node, then it's the root. Uh, we ask two, hey, what's your root? It, it also finds the parent two, which is equal to the value of itself. So that means, okay, uh, my root is two. Now that means the number of components, and you see that one is not equal to two. That means then there is going to be an union, successful union. So the number of components we, is going to be reduced to one, by one. It becomes three now. And now we have to do the union. So we have to ask one, hey, what's the size of your component? One says my size is two. We ask two, what's the size of your component? It says my size is one. That means the smaller one go, is connected to the larger one. So what's going to happen is we're going to connect here, right? Okay. So uh, we need to change the size of the component. So the size of the component, the component is recognized by its root, which is one. So I change the size to three. Okay. Okay. Next, we read this edge to three. Okay, so we ask two. Oh, another thing that we change is we actually change the parent. I forgot to change the parent. So we ask two, hey, what's your root? So two says, okay, my parent is one, which is uh, not my, is not equal to my value. So I still cannot say if it's my parent, uh, root or not. So I will go to this one will actually take me to here. So we come here. So it comes here and asks its parent again. So that means two comes to one. And one asks itself about its parent. And it says, okay, its parent is one. Now we can say, okay, its root is one because uh, the parent value matches the node's value. Three, we go and ask three, and three says my parent is three, which is equal to my own value. That means my root is also three. Three and one are not the same. That means I have to make an union. So how do I make an union? I ask three, what's your size? It says one. I ask one, what's your size? It says three. So that means from three to one, I have to make a link, right? And the new parent is going to be one okay new parent is going to be one and the size of the component is also updated by one okay next i'm going for three and four okay so we ask three hey what's your parent three says okay let's ask one because it's not the same value as mine we go to one ask and see this the same value so it returns by root as one and then we ask sometimes i'm actually 
mixing up with parent and root. Basically, every time we are looking for root, not the parent. If we, we go to the parent array and see if the value of the node and the parent node matches, if it doesn't match, we go to next to the parent index and we keep on doing this until the value matches. Four says, okay, my value is four. My parent's value is also four. That means my root is also four. Since they are not equal, then we have to make a union. And the number of components now become one, right? Last time it became two. This time it becomes one. And then I, sorry, 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 sorry. So one and four are merged or unionized. And the component size for one is increased by one. That is five. That's it. We're done with everything. Finally, the number of components is one. Okay. Uh, so one last thing. Here in this example, we didn't need to do any path compression, but we had to do this, say, if something was like this, right? Say A, B, C. I would have asked, hey, what's your, hey, A, what's your root? It was checking and it was saying, okay, the root value was, say, the parent value was, say, it was B here, the parent value was C here, and the parent value was C here, right? Okay, so it would have checked between its parent value and its own value. It doesn't match, so it would have jumped to the parent value. Again, it would have checked between the parent value and its own value. Done. Doesn't match, so it would have again went to the parent and asked to match. And once the match happened, it would have said, okay, my root is C. So this is how we do the find, but we also need, can do some path compression. So you see, if I say, hey, A, what's your root? It first checks, checks his parent and it says, okay, my parent is B doesn't match my own value. That means I am not the root. So what I can do is, before I jump to B, why don't I just change my parent to my grandparent, that is C. Okay, I change my parent to my grandparent. What happens is, if I do this thing, next time actually it becomes easier for me. It, it becomes more efficient for me. You see, I, I break this link, I break this link, and I make a link here to my grandparent. That means I say, I will keep on saying my parent is C. Okay, so next time if I ask A, hey A, what's your uh, parent? Then A will just directly jump to C and C will check it again as his own parent, right? So this is a, some kind of path compression. So we are, we'll also try to apply that. Okay, so let's try to uh, code this. So obviously we need a parent. Okay, let's, let's try to make this a little bit bigger. Okay, int So we are declare, initializing an array parent or these are actually global. So let's make these ones global. These are going to be used in different ones. So in different functions. Okay, parent and size. Okay, and initially parent is going to be The size of this is going to be the number of size of the number of nodes, uh, and size is similar. Okay, and then we do the initialization. So we run a for loop.
So we need, what we do is we assign the node itself to its as its parent at the beginning. This is creating n number of uh, disjoint components. And the size for each component is going to be one at the beginning. Or we could just do this array dot fill since we are doing Java size one. Okay, we could just do this instead of this. Okay, so this is the initialization that we're doing. Now let's try to do a fine thing. Sorry, this is going to be arrays. So the what the find is going to do is it is going to return the root of the component given any node, right? We have to check if i equals to equals to parent i, right? Then sorry, we return i, that is this is the root. Also we what we do is while i not equals to parent i until this is not true i just keep on hopping to my parent so okay okay and uh we know about this hopping and then we also talked about some path compression technique. So if this is not true, we can just do one step of path compression. I set my parent to my grandparent, parent of parent, right? It will help me later. And then I hop onto my parent, that's fine. So this is path compression, it will help me later. Now let's talk about the union. Okay, and union happened between node I and J. Union obviously has to do find first. So it will look for root of I, that is the root component where the I node is. It will ask for find I. And then it will do it the same thing for finding a root for the J. All right. And then it will check if these two roots are same. If these two are same, that means they are already in the same component. So I don't need to uh, do anything, right? I don't need to do any union. They are already the same component, so. Otherwise I have to do union, but this time I have to do union by size, right? Uh, so if size of these root component, Sorry, size array is greater than equals to if this is true then what I have to do is I have to that means uh, the component for I is bigger than the component for J so I have to change this component parent to i. So j's component has to be joined with i. So root i, root of i becomes the root of j. And also I have to uh, I have to up, update the size. So root of i becomes now the new root. This one also adds to the size of the component where j was, right? Okay. And not only that, oh, okay, so yeah. Uh, else, 
You can just copy this. This is the opposite. That means R, uh, R I, sorry, R J becomes R I's parent, and the size of R I is integrated with R J. Okay, and in both of these cases, the number of components uh, decrease by one. So in number of components, so let's put it in comp. And initially, the number of component, we initialized it with the number of vertices, right? Okay, so if I have reached this point, that means a union has happened. If no union had happened, I would have returned here. Otherwise, the union has happened, so I reduce the number of components by one. Okay, so we have defined union and find. Now let's go through each of the edges and keep on doing whatever is needed. So for edge, so for each pair of pair edge from edges, so let's try to do this union. edge uh, the first element and the last element of the pair right and after doing all the unions and other things we will have our number of components updated right okay okay so let's try to run it hmm. Oh, okay, so here actually I had to return. Yeah. So finally, when I becomes parent, I, I return. Okay. Okay, so you see this was pretty fast. Now, what's the time complexity of this algorithm? This is very important. So you see, let's put new size. So you see that uh, we had done path compression and union by size, right? So if we do that, you know that the union becomes order of uh, with path compression and alpha n. This is an inverse Ackermann function. We say that this is uh, like log star n, right? So how many times we did this? We did the union how many times? The number of edges. So can we say that uh, in total, the union took this amount of time? Okay. And the number of vertices is order of, say, n or n is actually v here. The so number of vertices was order uh, v. So let's go to the code one more time and check. So you see here that uh, all these things happened order of v, right? This is order of v. Uh, this one is order of e. And each of these happened like union happened like order of Ackermann function. So that means order of V plus order of E into alpha V. That is the time complexity of the algorithm. What is the space complexity? 
Now you see we needed these extra space, right? To do it. Uh, that is order of V. So the space complexity is order of V. So we can say the time complexity is order of V for populating the all the initializations and order of E into alpha V. This is uh, for all the unions. This is the time complexity. And the space complexity is going to be order of V because we needed V space for that size array and also that parent array. So hopefully this, this problem actually helped you in understanding the union find algorithm. Also, you can solve any kind of problems that is similar to this using the same technique. Uh, next time we'll come back with another problem. And thanks everyone for watching and till next